I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, the netcast, the video netcast. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Now, let me tell you why I'm in such a weird mood. <laughs> I just did about a third of the netcast that you didn't see because I forgot to turn my microphone on. See the little green glowy dot there? If you don't have a green glowy dot, you're just talking and nothing's coming out. Well, technically something was coming out, but it wasn't being recorded. Do you like my fake talking there? <laughs> Sometimes I ought to do that in real life because it makes just about as much sense. Just saying. Anyway, now I got to do the whole show over again almost. <sighs> Always check your green glowy dot. Just telling you, it's a life lesson. Okay. <laughs> I can see it now. This will be the green glowy dot version of the netcast. <laughs> I like it. My titles of the netcast express the personality of the individual netcast. And that's what this one is. Anyway, I mentioned we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, which we are. It's hard to remember now what I said because I already said it, but you don't see it because I can't play it since it never needs sound, so I don't know what I'm saying now. Anyway, let me just kind of gather myself a moment. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at myself. You know, it's, if you can't laugh at yourself, what good is it? Okay. Anyway, the point is, I am extremely proud that Citrix Systems is a sponsor of this netcast for their uh, go-to express Go to Assist Express, as it says there, software, which is awesome. And if you're a geek, and I know you probably are if you watch this netcast, you have lots of people that you need to help. They need help. <laughs> and some of them you can help because it's PC and computer related. Other means of help that they may need you may not be able to work with. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But... <laughs> If it's help with their PC, you can use Go to Assist Express to go to their PC and help them, you know, locate an icon or help with something that's going on in their system, finding how to start their software, you know, click on the icon. It reminds me of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where it says, the secrets to bang the rocks together, guys. Well, the secrets to press the little icons on the screen, guys. You want to start software. I'm just saying. I've had people call me up and go, can you help me start Skype? Try clicking on the Skype icon. Oh, yeah. Don't call me with those kinds of questions. You know, if you have a blue screen, actually don't call me if you have a blue screen either. I don't want to fool with it. But other kinds of things your geek friends can help with other non-geek friends, particularly using GoTo uh, Assist Express. Yes. So this URL right here that I'm putting on the screen, special URL, bit.ly URL, it's shortened to make it easy to remember and to write down and to use. It'll be in the show notes. It'll be on the website. It's just everywhere. Click on that link and you'll get a 30-day free trial of GoTo Assist Express from Citrix Systems just for watching Dr. Bill. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's awesome that they did that. All right, let's go look at the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, is drbill.cc for computer curmudgeon. 
and I'm very curmudgeonly today because of the stupid flashy green light that wasn't on. Anyway, first item. <laughs> I'm going to look over here, by the way, to my screen so I can read the blog. I read my own blog. I wrote it. <laughs> no. Anyway, Firefox 6 is out, but does anyone care? Okay. Here's what I said. Well, it's out. I downloaded it. It doesn't look different. It is slightly faster, but it's still not as fast as Chrome. Yawn. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. It's just, who cares? Matter of fact, it says right there in the article that uh, Firefox 5 has not, Firefox 6 has not changed much since Firefox 5. Not a lot visibly has changed. The domain name in the address bar is now highlighted to make phishing, that's with a PH, phishing, more apparent, mimicking a similar feature already found in Internet Explorer. What? Firefox is catching up to Internet Explorer. You know things have gone wonky at Mozilla. I'm just saying. I'm, you know, I'm pretty much done with Firefox until they get their act together. It's slow. It's bloated. They're now mimicking Internet Explorer. They're behind on features. That's why I use Chrome. It's fast. I click it. Boom. It's there. It works. And it's awesome. Why use Firefox anymore? Why even talk about it anymore? I'm in a mood. Just saying. Anyway. Here's the big news of the week. <laughs> Fanfare for the big news of the week, which is HP kills its tablet, smartphone, and PC divisions. What? Now remember, you thought Dell was the big number one computer PC maker. Probably. But it's really HP. HP is the biggest, the largest PC maker in the world. And they got together in their high towers with their mahogany, you know, conference tables. And they sat around and said, you know, our web OS stinks. Nobody's buying our tablets. We're pretty much doomed. Why don't we just give up? Pretty much. I mean, they're getting rid of their PC division. Biggest, biggest PC maker in the world. <sighs> I was somewhat bummed, but just from a nostalgic point of view. I mean, okay, here's the thing. I used to work for uh, on computers that were made by Digital Equipment Corporation. DEC. DEC was bought by Compact. Compact computers absorbed all of DEC's stuff, and then they became a really large PC maker, and then HP bought Compact. So there's a lineage of history that I have associated with those companies. And now they're getting out of the PC business. Whoa. So anyway, I think the whole thing here is the handwriting is pretty much on the wall that we're in the post-PC era. That's what they're calling it. Which means people are just kind of going, eh, about PCs. And they're moving toward handheld devices and tablets and things of that nature. Yes. So, maybe it was a smart move for HP to get out of the PC business. But me, I'm still kind of partial to PCs. Just, maybe it's because I'm a computer curmudgeon. I don't know. Anyway. <sighs> Just saying. All right. Next item. New computer chips work more like the human brain. <laughs> they work like my computer brain. Computer brain. If they weren't more like my brain, things would be stranger out there. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, I multitask so much that I get ahead of my brain and it goes in various directions all at the same time and my tongue can't keep up with it. And so it starts saying things sideways. I guess that's what happens. We'll go with that. Anyway... New computer chips. See, see, exactly what I'm talking about. New computer chips work more like the human brain. IBM Systems 
Neuromorphic Adaptive Plastic Scalable Electronics. That's, that's a mouthful. It's called Synapse. That's what it spells. Systems of Neuromorphic Adaptive Plastic Scalable Electronics. It's made of plastic. No, that's plastic in the sense of malleable and never mind. Anyway, it's a project designing chips that are more like the human brain. The goal is to make computers more adaptive and human-like. Is that a good thing? Anyway, IBM has created prototype chips that can mimic brain-like functionality, which the company said is unprecedented. An unprecedented step toward... Creating intelligent computers that collect, process, and understand data quickly. Do I want my computer to understand what it's doing? Just saying. Anyway, the prototype chips will give mind-like abilities for computers to make decisions. In other words, basically they're coming up with Skynet. To whom? Oh well. Maybe we'll all have Terminators. Like Arnold. I'll be back. Anyway. You know. No. Okay. I'm moving on. I'm kind of bored with that. I mean, okay, so they're going to make chips that are more like human brains. Not sure that's a good idea. IBM. Just, just saying. Okay, next item. WordPress. WordPress is a blogging platform that is really more of a content management system, CMS, because it is expanded in its capabilities. I'm going all webmastery on you. You know, it's I one of my major certifications is in uh, internet webmastering. Matter of fact, I hold a certification that's right there, right there on the wall. <laughs> the blue and white one there <laughs> is a certified internet webmaster server administrator certification. Yes, I'm actually quite proud of that one because it took four different tests to get that. And that was a lot of work and a lot of money. But anyway, just saying. But so I'm all internet webmastery in my background. I do a lot of it. I used to be webmaster for Guilford County. So, I won't go into that, though. There are those of you out there who know the story. <laughs> but anyway, they brought me in to revolutionize their website, which I did. And once I finished, they said we want somebody younger and that doesn't have a gray beard. Eh, it's okay. The guy they got was a guy I was working with, and I like him a lot. Hey, Scott. Matter of fact, his voice, Scott's voice, is the voice you hear at the beginning of the netcast saying, where is that channel? Take it away, doctor. That's Scott. Isn't that cool? So, no hard feelings. He's now webmaster. And he does a great job. Yes. And he's really good with graphics. Dude. This guy is awesome with graphics. Anyway. Point is, boy, I digressed a lot, didn't I? Anyway, the point is, he's got a great job, I've got a great job, everybody's happy. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so, WordPress is a CMS, content management system. Now, when I was with the county, we were looking at content management systems, and so I got into them in a great, extensive, great, large deal. And we were looking at very large, expensive ones. But just between you and me and the wall, web, WordPress, not WordPress, WordPress is awesome. I use it myself. As a matter of fact, the very website that the Dr. Bill Show is on, drbill.cc, d-r-b-i-l-l.cc for computer curmudgeon, is powered by WordPress. Isn't that cool? So, here it is. It says WordPress now powers 22% of all active websites in the U.S. That's impressive. It also powers 14.7% of the top million websites in the world, up from 8.5%. 22 out of every 100 new active domains in the U.S. are running WordPress. That's impressive statistics, no matter how you slice them. So I'm a big WordPress fan. I like WordPress. If you're looking for a CMS 
you know, blogging platform, CMS, you look at WordPress because it's got, well, check this out. It's got 15,000 plugins, all free, and well, most of them free anyway, and has seen 200 million plugin downloads. WordPress 3.2 has 500,000 downloads in the first two days. Dude, I mean, these, these stats are just amazing. So, WordPress. Pretty cool. Now, whoa! <laughs> Drum roll! <laughs> is telling us that it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... Clonezilla! <laughs> Clonezilla, not Techzilla. Techzilla is an awesome netcast that I love to watch with um, Patrick Norton and Robert Heron and Veronica Belmont. Awesome show. You should watch that too. Watch that and Dr. Bill and you'll be informed about all that's going on in the tech world. I mean, I'm really that much into Techzilla. Never miss it. But this isn't Techzilla. This is Clonezilla. What's with the Zillas? I don't know. Anyway, Clonezilla is awesome. It is open source. It is free. And it handles everything you need for disk imaging. Now, if you're familiar with Norton, Norton, <laughs> reminds me of the old Jackie Gleason show. Boy, I'm dating myself. That's where the gray hair comes in. Dating myself with the Jackie Gleason show. And Norton. Hey, Norton. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I really, that's pretty, that goes back a long ways. Okay, anyway, never mind. Anyway, you're probably familiar with the property, popular proprietary commercial package Norton Ghost. The problem with this kind of software I'm reading here from their site, software packages that it takes a lot of time to massively clone systems to many computers. You've probably also heard of Symantec's solution to this problem, which is Symantec Ghost Corporate Edition with multicasting. Well, now there's an open source clone system, OCS. They got to use abbreviations. It makes it official. <laughs> called Clonezilla with unicasting and multicasting. Multicasting! Clonezilla based on DRBL, part clone and upcast. It's hard to say. Allows you to do bare metal backup and recovery. Two types of Clonezilla are available. Clonezilla Live and Clonezilla SE, which is server edition. Now this is what's so cool. This is free but they have a server edition. There's a lot of products that have a PC edition, but when you try to use it on a server, it goes, no, you can't use it on a server because this is, this is not designed for servers. You have to pay big bucks to use it on a server. Well, as a server administrator, I miffed at that. But here, the server edition is free too. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, Clonezilla Live is suitable for single machine backup and restore, while Clonezilla SE is for massive deployment. It can be done many 40 plus computers simultaneously. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Clonezilla saves and restores only used blocks in the hard disk. This increases the clone efficiency. At the NCHC's Classroom C, Clonezilla SE was used to clone 41 computers simultaneously. It took only about 10 minutes to clone a 5.6 gigabyte system image to all 41 computers via multicasting. That's pretty cool. So, <coughs> I'm all choked up about it. So anyway, here's all the, I'm looking for my mouse and I'm grabbing things that aren't my mouse. It's not good. It is, these are features. Free GPL software. File system supported are EXT2, EXT3, EXT4, Riser FS, Riser 4, XFS, GFS of the new Linux variety. FAT, NTFS of MS Windows. HFS Plus of Mac OS. UFS of FreeBSD, NetBSD, and OpenBSD, and VMFS of VMware ESX. It will even do restores of VMware SX from bare metal. Which is cool, but I mean, actually, <laughs> installing VMware ESX, particularly ESXi, only takes 
mirror moments and all the configuration is done in the configuration console. So, yeah, I'm not sure that's so cool. But it's still kind of neat that they support it. You know what I'm saying? Boy, I'm getting all techy on you. I don't mean to. It's just that I'm a VMware VCP certified dude, as well as the other cert that I have on the wall. I got a lot of certs. Not as many as a guy at work that's a friend of mine, Bruce Walker. He's got more certs than me. He's got more certs than anybody in the world. <laughs> His whole wall is covered with certs. The dude is like cert crazy. They even told him you could wallpaper your whole wall with your certs, and he could. <laughs> dude is smart. Man. Anyway. <laughs> Hope you're watching, Bruce. <laughs> Get a kick out of that. <laughs> anyway. Um, so... Where was I at? I was talking about how did they get off on certs? I don't know. Play it back and see. I don't know. Anyway. So, oh, VMware, yes. <laughs> yes, it comes back to me now. I am certified in VMware, and so I know all these things, and it just comes out, and I'm sorry if you're not a VMware person and don't care. Just bear with me. Anyway. LVM2. LVM version 1 is not supported. But LVM2 is. Under the new Linux is supported. That's like Logical Volume Manager. Which, between you and me, I've had some problems with Logical Volume Manager in Linux. So the fact that they can support that is pretty cool. Anyway, Grub version 1 and version 2 are supported. Unattended mode is supported. Almost all steps can be done via commands and options. You can also use boot parameters to customize your own imaging and cloning. Multicast. Multicast. I love saying that. Multicast is supported in Clonezilla SE, which is suitable for massively cloning. You can also remote... You can remotely use it to save and restore a bunch of computers if Pixie or Wake on LAN is supported in your clients. Pixie booting. PXE. Pixie booting. I like that. That's fun because... You think of little pixies in there starting your computers across the network. <sighs> anyway, multicast, I said that is supported. Uh, the image file can be on a hard disk, an SSH server, a Samba server, or an NFS server. It's based on Park Clone, which is the default, 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 it's hard to say these words, Part Image, which is optional. NTFS clone optional RDD to image or clone a partition. However, Clonezilla containing some other programs can save and restore not only partitions, but the whole disk. By using another free software, DRBL WinRoll, which is also developed by us, the host name group and SID of clone NMS Windows machines can be automatically changed. They can change the SID on the fly so that the image has a unique SID. That's a system ID for those of you that aren't familiar with SID. SID, Velma, Charlie. Just saying. Anyway, <laughs> I'm being silly. So, isn't that cool? Geek Software of the Week, Clonezilla. Check it out. Perhaps it will save you megatons of money and you'll have gotten your benefit from watching the Dr. Bill netcast. Your money's worth. It's free netcast, so definitely get your money's worth. Just saying. So, um, oh, oops. I forgot to mention one of our sponsors. I'm sorry. Let me just stop right here and mention one of our sponsors. And that is... I'm really sorry. I should have mentioned it earlier. I feel so bad. Carbonite, as it is on the screen here. Carbonite is an awesome solution to back up your PC. And there's an awesome free trial available right here through drbill.tv. So all you got to do is use this bit.ly URL here, special bit.ly URL, which will be in the show notes. And you can get a free trial of Carbonite. And I do not by any means wish to slight Carbonite. I should have mentioned them earlier. I'm really sorry about that. But I tell you what, it is an awesome solution. Like I said, I interviewed 
David Friend, one of the guys who came up with Carbonite many years ago on the netcast. And let me tell you, he is serious about saving your data. So Carbonite is a very serious, awesome tool. And it is so inexpensive to use, even on an unlimited basis, you really ought to check it out. Okay? Man, I really feel bad that I didn't mention them earlier. But it's okay. What you need to do is right now, go click on the bit.ly URL and find out about the special trial because it will help you out. And I'm telling you, once you lose some data, <laughs> you'll never be the same. I know, I've lost data. And I've never been the same. And many people can attest to that. Yes. So, that's going to be... <laughs> it for our netcast this week. Remember, until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.